Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, March 4. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says a contingency provision has been set aside in the budget to adequately deal with COVID-19's onset should this occur. A response would take the form of ensuring, for example, that we have adequate facilities for quarantining, which might mean preparing buildings and we have appropriate, you know, medication and so on. The finance minister was addressing members of the Standing Finance Committee of the House during a review of the 2020-21 estimates of expenditure on Tuesday. Minister Clark says Jamaica's stable economy has put the country in a good position to respond to the possible economic downturn in production and trade from the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. The good news is that Central Bank, we have resources on the fiscal side where economically stable uh, and uh, the keys to monitor, to get information and be in a position to react as soon as the situation demands it. Yeah. And, and we remain nimble enough to be able to do that. The Ministry of Education has developed a three-tiered education in emergencies response system as a precautionary measure to brace for the possible introduction of the COVID-19 virus on the island. Under level one of the strategy, bulletins are issued to schools outlining tips and measures to prevent its spread. Level 2 involves updating bulletins issued to schools advising parents to ensure children who have flu-like symptoms remain at home until they are fully recovered. Schools will also be provided with between thirty dollars and $50,000 to procure and distribute hand sanitizers, hand washing soap and disinfectant. Under Level 3 of the emergency system, school leaders will be asked to create online spaces for children who are unwell to continue their learning. In addition to providing Wi-Fi compatible tools such as tablets, the Ministry will reschedule exams or activities as well as extend the school year if necessary. The Education Ministry says online learning kits are being prepared by the Ministry's Curriculum Unit for uploads on the MOEYI websites. PEP practice booklets and PEP camp workbooks have been prepared for electronic distribution to support continued preparation. There will also be multi-sectoral partnerships to ensure consistency in messages and informed responses. And Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the island's National Disaster Committee will meet this Thursday to extend its national response to the COVID-19 virus. From that meeting, it's expected that a subcommittee to deal with the day-to-day -day management of the island's disaster response mechanism will be formed. While the state is implementing measures to protect the island from the virus, Mr. Holness called on citizens to make their health a top priority. Exercise greater caution and vigilance in public places. Be careful about the surfaces you touch. That is the personal responsibility and the personal vigilance that every citizen will have to have to protect our country. In other news, ground has been broken for a one-year $950 million project. Tuesday's Port Royal Street Coastal Revetment Project will see to the building of a one-kilometer seawall along the corridor that stretches from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs building to Raytown. In addition to drainage upgrades, the raising of the roadway and the construction of a boardwalk, a new 80-meter fishing beach will be created. This intervention will secure the Port Royal Street corridor and to protect critical infrastructure along the coastline from the impacts associated with sea level rise and coastal erosion. The project is being managed by the Jamaica Social Investment Fund through a World Bank loan. And finally, government and the World Bank have signed a 40 million US dollar loan agreement for implementation of the second phase of the Rural Economic Development Initiative Ready2 program. Tuesday's signing is expected to improve access to markets and increase resilience to climate change for 200 micro, small and medium-sized enterprises in agriculture, tourism and community-based activities in rural areas. Some 70,000 persons are to benefit from investment, training and capacity building initiatives. Ready2 will be implemented by the Jamaica Social Investment Fund. It will consist of uh, multiple parts and the the first part will seek to ensure that the linkages within the rural economy are deepened and are strengthened through initiatives such as ensuring that we can have access to uh, drought-resistant crops, for example, that are climate-resistant, 
and that the supply chain is strengthened through the implementation of cold storage facilities, drying and packing houses and so forth. We are very proud that we can uh, help and contribute to your vision of uh, uh, enhancing growth and in improving employment opportunities. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.